A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his lords, with whom he drank. Under the influence of the wine, he ordered the gold and silver vessels which Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem to be brought in so that the king, his lords, his wives, and his entertainers might drink from them. When the gold and silver vessels taken from the house of God in Jerusalem had been brought in, and while the king, his lords, his wives, and his entertainers were drinking wine from them, they praised their gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. Suddenly, opposite the lampstand, the fingers of a human hand appeared, writing on the plaster of the wall in the king's palace. When the king saw the wrist in the hand that wrote, his face blanched, his thoughts terrified him, his hip joints shook, and his knees knocked. Then Daniel was brought into the presence of the king. The king asked him, Are you the Daniel, the Jewish, Jewish exile, whom my father, the king, brought from Judah? I have heard that the Spirit of God is in you, that you possess brilliant knowledge and extraordinary wisdom. I have heard that you can interpret dreams and solve difficulties. If you are able to read the writing and tell me what it means, you shall be clothed in purple, wear a gold collar about your neck, and be third in the government of the kingdom. Daniel answered the king, You may keep your gifts, or give your presence to someone else. But the writing I will read for you, O king, and tell you what it means. You have rebelled against the Lord of heaven. You had the vessels of his temple brought before you, so that you and your nobles, your wives and your entertainers, might drink wine from them. And you praised the gods of, the, of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone that neither see nor hear nor have intelligence. But the God in whose hand is your life breath, and the whole course of your life, you did not glorify. By him were the wrist and hand sent, and the writing set down. This is the writing that was inscribed. Mini, Tekel, and Purez. These words mean Meaning, God has numbered your kingdom and put an end to it. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Verbum Domini. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Sun and moon, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Stars of heaven, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Every shower and dew, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. All you winds, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Fire and heat, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Cold and chill, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever.
and I will give you the crown of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Dominus Fabesco. Lexia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. Gloria Tini Domine. Jesus said to the crowd, They will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. They will lead you to give to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking, that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. Verbum Domini. Sunday we begin Advent in this last week of ordinary time we have meditations from the readings on the end times <clears throat> of persecutions and and the first reading from Daniel is part of apocalyptic literature it's these prophesi prophecies about the end times and the first reading is from Daniel 5 and then the psalm today is from Daniel 3 and it's a story we're probably familiar with and and I'm going to describe it here in a minute, but it's, you know, this responsorial psalm is all about giving glory and eternal praise to God, you know, calling upon all creation to bless the Lord. <clears throat> and what does that mean, you know, to bless the Lord? The Father blesses us with divine and life-giving action, the Catechism teaches. You know, he creates us, he sustains us, you know, all creation, in a sense, all of visible creation is a is a blessing from God for man. And in salvation history, we see God at work you know, preparing for the coming of his son to save us, to worship the Father, that we can join in that praise and blessing of God through and with and in Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit working in us that we can offer up praise to God, <clears throat> to bless God through Jesus. That Jesus is coming again to transform creation by his glory and to offer it renewed to the Heavenly Father, you know, to show forth God's glory. The Catechism says that for man, this blessing towards God means adoration and surrender to his creator in thanksgiving. Adoration and surrender and thanksgiving to the creator, to the Heavenly Father. Now this Responsorial Psalm takes place in the time of the exile, the Babylonian captivity. This is 500s BC in Babylon, modern day Iraq. And we have uh, Daniel, who's mentioned uh, today in the reading, who, you know, the king, there's different kings during this period, and eventually the Persians conquer him. And they, they take certain of the Israelites who are noted for their intelligence and wisdom and place them in their government to help govern uh, Babylon, you know, the place of their captivity and to give advice, to be a council. But at the same time, they're being persecuted and this responsorial psalm is a story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These were three friends of Daniel who rose up in the government because of their, their wisdom. And we've hear their stories the last couple of days about them so Nebuchadnezzar built this golden image 
and said everyone in the kingdom must worship it. And of course, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused because they were faithful Jews to worship this pagan idol. So Nebuchadnezzar's furious and he threatens them with death. And they, they give this powerful response. You know, they say, you know, our God, the God of Israel, can deliver us. And the text says, but if not, you know, we won't worship the beast. <laughs> we won't give in. And so they put their stake in the ground. You know, they're not going to give in to this. So Nebuchadnezzar heats up this big furnace, heats it up seven times normal <laughs> than normal, and he binds them up, the three men, and throws them in, the captors will throw them in, the furnace is so hot it takes their lives as well. And they're in the furnace, and God sends an angel to protect them. At one point it's described as a son of man, a Christ figure, that into the furnace, into the uh, persecution, into the suffering, God sends his anointed one, you know, to be with us, to strengthen us. And he sends an angel, it's described as well. And in the fiery you know, place of martyrdom for them, they give this big hymn of praise to God. They're singing and blessing God, and this angel with them. And the text tells us they have a contrite heart, a humble spirit, may we be accepted. You know, they cry out before God in leading this praise, say, may we have this sorrowful heart for our own sins. And now with all our heart, we follow you, we fear you, we seek your face, and they call for deliverance from the furnace. But it's a beautiful statement of surrender, of contrition, of repentance and renewal. And then they give this, this long blessing. And it says, this is just a part of it, you know, sun and moon, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Stars of heaven, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Every shower and dew, bless the Lord. All you winds, bless the Lord. Fire and heat, bless the Lord. Cold and chill, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. So it's a beautiful image of what we're called to do as human persons made in the image and likeness of God to lead all creation back to God, to worship God. That creation is made to glorify God. And man, in particular, is called to worship God. He's unique in the invisible creation. Angels are, are persons, too. They're angelic persons. We're human persons. So we, we have an intellect and a will. We possess freedom. That God is directing us to glorify him by our lives, by living good lives, by surrendering to him. He's... He's leading us to him to direct us from within, that we can make that decision. Animals and, and, and you know, material beings, inanimate objects, you know, they, they don't have a choice, right? They live by instinct or just by their existence. They still glorify God, but human beings are special because we can know and love God. We can choose to worship him, we can choose to surrender him, to surrender to him, or not to. Right, Nebuchadnezzar's leading this big rebellion against the God of Israel. We see in creation itself, we have six days of creation, and there's this building dignity to the creatures made by God, finally culminating in man. And God saw that it was very good, right? He says he sees that it's it's good when he makes the heavens and the earth and living creatures and plants. But when he gets to man, he says he sees that it's very good and that man is made in his image and likeness, that this creature can love me, can know me, can worship me, can give voice to the rest of creation to praise him. And by his work, to cultivate and till the garden, to order it, to make it even more beautiful, to bring it into service and to subjection to God's plan for all of humanity, to live in communion with one another, to develop and use the good things of this earth 
to serve us, to help us, to serve, praise God, to raise families, to build a civilization of love. And to do that, we must have this fundamental adoration of God in our life. We have to fall down on our knees and surrender and praise to him to be directed by him because we're fallen, right? We have a tendency to sin. We have a tendency to, to use, to uh, not be good stewards of creation. But even in our being itself, you know, we're made body and soul. We, it's one, body and soul are one together. But through our work and even in our being itself, we gather creation to worship God. You know, even in ourselves, we're uniting that material world to the spiritual. Our soul is a spiritual component to us. And in that soul, that rational being that we are, intellect and will, we can give voice, a language of praise to our Heavenly Father. But that's not to say that creation doesn't have something to teach us. You know, we could say that as a popular song, there's a great praise and worship song that I like. It's called So Will I. And in one of the verses in there, it says that all of creation reveals the heart of God, reveals him as the, as the creator, as the divine artist. But two, this particular song, So Will I, I think it, it highlights how what creation teaches us about that fundamental surrender that we're called to make even in the fiery furnace, even in the difficulties of life, even under the burden of the cross. And some of the verses in this song says, if the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. If anything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. And it gives us meditation about a hundred billion galaxies are created. You're just showing forth the majesty of God. But he says, you know, if the wind goes where you send it, so will I. Think about that, how we can imitate creation and and obeying God. They're, these things do what their nature is, you know. They just by, they can't change that being. But they model for us in a certain sense perfect obedience. The wind blows where God sends it. You know, the oceans roar your greatness. You know, that we are called to praise God. You know, the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. You know, we can learn something from that looking at creation, to adore him, to praise him, to worship him, to surrender, to seek his will. And in doing so, we praise and worship the Almighty Father.